Hello medical students, this is Helen McFarlane and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to show you your loggers for foothills. So Dr. Adams will be talking to you about the why of logging and I'm going to be talking to you about the how of logging. So to start with, we will go to Oasis, which you've used for um, lotteries and scheduling. And when you log in using your university credentials, you'll see a homepage that has your schedule on it. Now this is a fake student called medical student. We're very original. Um, so the list is short here. You'll see all the courses that you took in planes and the ones that you're taking in foothills here when you log in. So once you get here, you're going to go up into this gold menu bar and click on degree progress and then click requirement checklist. This is going to take you to a page that looks like this. You have two loggers. One is the core clinical conditions logger. And this is a list of all of the conditions that you're required to see during foothills. And the other one is your panel patient logger. So we're going to start with the conditions logger, which is this foothills logger. And the way we open it is we click show on the right. And that's going to open this list of all of the core clinical conditions. Now, this is a long list, but we've um, organized it with prefixes um, to identify the systems to help you find things in this list quickly. So you'll, you can scroll down the whole list. We also have a document that lists all of these. So you have a PDF where you can look at them uh, outside of Oasis just to keep track of what you are working on. So I want to point out a couple of things just in this list. You'll see within cardio, you have arrhythmia that has no patient age range here. The next thing is cardiac chest pain, and this does have a patient age range that's required. So if that's there, this gives you an indication of what patient population you need to see this condition in. Some of your conditions will have an adult and a child listed, so know that those are independent requirements and you need to see each of them. Now, if we click on arrhythmia, which doesn't have a patient age range requirement, we click here. This is going to open this. We click add entry. The first thing that you'll do is click the date that you saw the patient. So we saw the patient today. Because there's no specific required age range, you will choose the age range of the patient that you saw. The next thing that you'll do is choose the setting where you saw this patient, whether it was inpatient, outpatient, or in the emergency department. The next thing that you will choose is whether this was with a patient or you completed this condition with an alternative method. Now we do ask that you save the alternative methods until the end of the year and really prioritize seeing patients. That's the optimal way to complete these clinical conditions. The notes field is for you to make notes. This should not be anything that would compromise HIPAA. If you see a patient that has multiple core clinical conditions, you can go down to this list here and choose a second one. So we'll say this patient had arrhythmia and obesity, and that will allow you to log once and complete multiple conditions with the same patient. Once you've completed this pretty short form, you'll hit submit. This will save, and then it will update your list. So you'll see for each of these, you only need to see one. So now that we've seen arrhythmia, we see this entry one of one, and the red dot has turned into a green check mark. Scrolling down, we also see that obesity, which we checked off as our second condition, has been marked off as well. So this is going to help you keep track of what you still need to see and um, be able to scroll quickly through the list and um, complete the requirements. 
I wanted to point out this abdominal pain when I mentioned earlier that you could have um, multiple patient age ranges. You'll see here, this example has an adult and a child. And you'll also notice that this is acute and then chronic, you can see any patient population. Let's look quickly at one of the core clinical conditions that does have a required patient population. So we will add an entry for osteoporosis for adult. We choose our date. You'll see here that you don't have an age range field because that is included in the condition. So the rest of these entries will look the same for you, but we've shortened the field slightly to help speed things along for you. So I'm just going to click cancel here rather than complete that. Periodically throughout the year, you will be asked to submit a report to share your progress in completing the core clinical conditions with your supervisor. The way you will do this is to open this logger and this view and then print a PDF to show your completion. So the check marks and the red dots will show up. Pretty straightforward. You may upload this to a, a Canvas assignment. You'll get instructions from your LIC coordinator. So let's close this and look at the patient panel logger. The panel patient logger is also here. This logger looks a little different from the core clinical condition logger. So you'll notice that it is shorter. This is not condition based. This is patient based. So you are required in your LIC to see panel patients that you'll be following for multiple visits throughout the year. The way this logger is set up is based on those patient panels. So you'll see for inpatient adult, you are required to see two inpatient adults with at least three care episodes with those patients or family members over time. So I'm going to click on this to show you what it looks like. Same thing here. We'll click add entry and this looks familiar. This is where it gets different. So what we would like you to do for each of your panel patients is put in unique patient initials. So these patient initials should be unique across all of your panel patients, not just the inpatient adult, which is the section that we're looking at right now. So if you have multiple patients with the initials HM, you'll want to use a middle initial or a number or something to help you remember which patient is which. For this visit, I'll put this, you'll want to include a diagnosis. Since we just logged obesity, we'll put that in here. The next thing that you will fill out is whether this visit was with your primary preceptor or was with a non LIC preceptor. So this could be another provider in any of your clinics for inpatient adult. So we'll say this was with the primary preceptor. This next field allows you to select multiple settings. So if you scroll down this list, um, this kind of talks about where you're seeing this patient or working on this patient's care. So notice that some of these things don't require you actually to see the patient. It could be radiology review, pathology review. And we've tried to make a fairly comprehensive list here, but we do have this option of other. If your work with this patient is something that's not in the list, you can select this. And then we just ask you, to give us some information in the notes section on what, what that um, setting was. So unlike the other fields that we've seen, the setting is a multi-select list. So this patient we saw in primary care. So we'll click that 
and it was also a telehealth visit. So if you're on a PC, you'll click control. And if you're on an Apple, you'll click command and you can select those two things for your patient. Once you've done that, you'll fill in the reason for the encounter and any additional notes other than the other setting that you would like to save about this patient. I do want to caution you not to include anything in this field that would um, be contrary to the HIPAA guidelines. So that is how you use your panel logger. So it's strongly recommended that you log many of your encounters, especially at the beginning of the year, because you won't know which patients you'll see again during your time in the foothills. That's also why it's important to make sure that the patient initials are unique across the entire panel patient logger. So these loggers are pretty straightforward. We do encourage you to keep up with it and not wait until you have an assignment check-in do uh, because it's really hard to think back to the patients that you've seen and remember which core clinical conditions or panel patients you've encountered since the last assignment. As always, if you have any technology issues, you can put in a Zendesk ticket and we're happy to help. Best wishes on the foothills. We know that you're going to have a great experience and learn a lot. Thank you very much.